Welcome to Lenny's Reads, where I bring you audio versions of my newsletter about building product, driving growth, and accelerating your career. You're probably hearing a lot of AI jargon, but do you really know what they mean? Below are the explain it to me like I'm five years old definitions of the 20 most common AI terms. These are drawn from my own understanding, a bunch of research and feedback from my most AI-pilled friends. If you already know all this, no sweat, this post isn't for you. For everyone else, keep the following list handy next time you're in a meeting and you're struggling to keep up with all the AI words buzzing around the room. I'll continue adding to this list as new buzzwords emerge. Let's get into it. First up is model. An AI model is a computer program that is built to work like a human brain. You give it some input, like a prompt, it does some processing, and it generates a response. Like a child, a model learns by being exposed to many examples of how people typically respond or behave in different situations. As it sees more and more examples, it begins to recognize patterns, understand language, and generate coherent responses. There are many different types of AI models. Some focus on language, like ChatGPT, O3, Claude, Sonnet 4, and Gemini, 2.5, and are known as large language models, or LLMs. Others are built for video, like Google VO3, OpenAI Sora, and Runway Gen 4. Some models specialize in generating voice, such as Eleven Labs, Cartesia, and Suno. There are also more traditional types of AI models, such as classification models used in tasks like fraud detection. There's also ranking models used in search engines, social media feeds, and ads. And there are regression models that are used to make numerical predictions. Next, let's look at large language models. LLMs are text-based models designed to understand and generate human-readable text. That's why the name includes the word language. Recently, most LLMs have actually evolved into multimodal models that can process and generate not just text, but also images, audio, and other types of content within a single conversational interface. For example, ChatGPT now natively supports text, images, and even voice. We've included a really good primer on how LLMs actually work, and also a popular deep dive by Andre Karpathy in the show notes. Another common term is transformer. The transformer architecture, developed by Google researchers in 2017, is the algorithmic discovery that made modern AI and large language models in particular possible. Transformers introduced a mechanism called attention, where instead of only being able to look at words sequentially, the model is able to look at all the words at once. This helps the models understand how words relate to each other, making them far better at capturing meaning, context, and nuance than earlier techniques. Another big advantage of transformers is that they're highly parallelizable. They can process many parts of a sequence at the same time, and this makes it possible to train much bigger and smarter models simply by scaling up the data and compute power. This breakthrough is why we suddenly went from basic chatbots to sophisticated AI assistants. Almost every major AI model today, including ChatGPT and Claude, is built on top of the transformer architecture. I've included the best explanation of transformers I've seen in the show notes, as well as a more technical deep dive. Next, let's define training and pre-training. Training is the process by which an AI model learns. It does this by analyzing massive amounts of data. This might include large portions of the internet, every book ever published, audio recordings, movies, video games, etc. Training state-of-the-art models can take weeks or months, require processing terabytes of data, and cost hundreds of millions of dollars. For LLMs, the core training method is called next word prediction. The model is shown billions of text sequences with the last word hidden, and it learns to predict what word should come next. As it trains, the model adjusts millions of internal settings called weights. These are similar to how neurons in the human brain strengthen or weaken their connections based on experience. When the model makes a correct prediction, those weights are reinforced. When it makes an incorrect one, they're adjusted. Over time, this process helps the model improve its understanding of facts, grammar, reasoning, and how language works in different contexts. If you're skeptical of next word prediction, generating novel insights, and super intelligent AI systems, I've included a snippet in the show notes of a co-founder of OpenAI explaining why it's deceivingly powerful. Next up is supervised learning. This refers to when a model is trained on labeled data, meaning the correct answers are provided. For example, the model might be given thousands of emails labeled spam or not spam, and from that, learn to spot the patterns that distinguish one from the other. Once trained, the model can then classify new emails it's never seen before. Most modern language models, including ChatGPT, use a subtype called self-supervised learning. Instead of relying on human-labeled data, the model creates its own labels, generally by hiding the last word of a sentence and learning to predict it. This allows it to learn from massive amounts of raw text without manual annotation. Unsupervised learning is the opposite. The model is given data without any labels or answers. 
Its job is to discover patterns or structure on its own, like grouping similar news articles together or detecting unusual patterns in a data set. This method is often used for tasks like anomaly detection, clustering, and topic modeling, where the goal is to explore and organize information rather than make specific predictions. Now let's look at post-training. This refers to all of the additional steps taken after training is complete to make the model even more useful. This includes steps like fine-tuning and RLHF. Fine-tuning is a post-training technique where you take a trained model and do additional training on specific data that's tailored to what you want the model to be especially good at. For example, you would fine-tune a model on your company's customer service conversations to make it respond in your brand's specific style, or on medical literature to make it better at answering healthcare questions, or on educational content for specific grade levels to create a tutoring assistant that explains concepts in age-appropriate ways. This additional training tweaks the model's internal weights to specialize its responses for your specific use case while preserving the general knowledge it learned during pre-training. There's an awesome technical deep dive into how fine-tuning works included in the show notes. Reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF, is a post-training technique that goes beyond next word prediction and fine-tuning by teaching AI models to behave the way humans want them to, making them safer, more helpful, and aligned with our intentions. RLHF is what's often referred to as alignment. This process works in two stages. First, human evaluators compare pairs of outputs and choose which is better, training a reward model that learns to predict human preferences. Then, the AI model learns through reinforcement learning, a trial and error process where it receives rewards from the reward model and not directly from humans for generating responses the reward model predicts humans would prefer. In the second stage, the model is essentially trying to game the reward model to get higher scores. You'll find a great guide plus a technical deep dive into RLHF included in the show notes. Another term you've probably heard is prompt engineering. This is the art and science of crafting questions, which are also known as prompts for AI models that result in better and more useful responses. Just like when you're talking to a person, the way you phrase your question can lead to dramatically different responses. The same AI model will give very different responses based on how you craft your prompt. There are two categories of prompts. One, conversational prompts what you send ChatGPT, Claude, or Gemini when you're having a conversation with it, and two, system or product prompts, the -the behind-the-scenes instructions that developers bake into products to shape how the AI product behaves. I've added a link to a podcast episode from just last week where we cover this and much more. Next, let's look at retrieval augmented generation. RAG is a technique that gives models access to additional information at runtime that they weren't trained on. It's like giving the model an open book test instead of having it answer from memory. When you ask a question like, how do this month's sales compare to last month, a retrieval system is able to search through your databases, documents, and knowledge repos to find pertinent information. This retrieved data is then added as context to your original prompt, creating an enriched prompt that the model then processes. This leads to a much better, more accurate answer. So let's summarize the terms we've covered so far. Pre-training teaches the model general knowledge and language. Fine-tuning specializes the model for specific tasks. RLHF aligns the model with human preferences. Prompt engineering crafts better inputs to guide the model toward more useful outputs. RAG retrieves additional relevant information from external sources to give the model up-to-date or task-specific context it wasn't trained on. We've included a great overview of fine-tuning versus RAG versus prompt engineering in the show notes. Let's move on to the next set of terms. Inference is when the model runs. When you ask ChatGPT a question and it generates a response, that's it doing inference. Next up is model context protocol. MCP is a recently released open standard that allows AI models to interact with external tools easily, reliably, and securely. This includes things like your calendar, CRM, Slack, or codebase. Previously, every developer had to write custom code for each new integration. MCP also gives the AI the ability to take actions through these tools. For example, updating customer records in Salesforce, sending messages in Slack, scheduling meetings in your calendar, or even committing code to GitHub. We've added a link to a really nice in-depth explanation in the show notes. This is the end of your free preview. To hear the full episode, become a paid subscriber at lennysnewsletter.com slash subscribe. If you're already a premium member, you can add the private feed to your podcast app by going to add.lennysreads.com. Thanks for listening and see you on the next show.